Hi, my name is Chris Baseford. I'm a recording engineer, producer, and mixer based in Los Angeles. Today, I'm going to show you a plugin called Studio Rack. I'm going to walk you through how I use Studio Rack on bass. It's a pretty neat thing that I think you'll be able to apply to a bunch of tracks throughout your session. So really quickly, a little background on this bass track. So it's a stereo track here. The left side is the DI. The right side is the amp. Instead of recording it on two separate tracks and then having to group them together and edit them, I put them all on one track and then just have the left side panned up the middle and the right side panned up the middle. And historically, I've had to use multiple mono plugins. It's, it becomes a pain in the ass and you can't have separate chains if it's all on the same track until now. Studio Rack lets you do that. I want to jump straight to the parallel split that I have set up on the bass because it's pretty incredible. When you set up a parallel split, it gives you the option in this drop down menu as to what signal you want to be coming down that lane. Because I've got my DI on the left, my amp on the right, these are my lanes for my DI here and my amp here. Here's where this gets really cool. Remember, I'm doing this all within one plugin. If I solo this here, let's just solo the bass. So we're just hearing the DI. Now I'm gonna to go to the right side, which is uh, more of an amp sound. Now they're both panned up the middle, so even though it's left and right, it's panned up the middle and you can control that down here. So here is the next lane, utilizing another really cool feature of Studio Rack called the uh, multiband split. This is a third amp sound, more of a high frequency distortion. and that's being derived from the DI. And then on this fourth lane, I've got another lane that's derived from the DI, the left side here, that's got low air on, which is providing a subharmonic signal into the chain. Unless you're wearing headphones or you're in a studio with some good monitors, you might not hear this. All within this one parallel split, I've got four different sounds that I then have assigned to my macros over here that let me mix and match the signals really quickly and easily. There's some DI. There's the amp. Some distortion. Some sub. And I don't know if you could see this, but down here, you probably saw these lines moving. You can also automate all of the macros. So I can automate the levels of the amps and the sub and the DI from section to section, or if there's a lick that I want to ride up on just the DI, whatever it is, it gives you all of that control right there. Pretty amazing. And it's literally those four knobs within one plugin, all within one track. It really simplifies the setup. The other thing within this chain that's unique is this multi-band split. So you can use a multi-band split in the main chain here to basically give you a multi-band version of any Waves plugin. So 1176, the CLA 2A, distortion unit, like any, literally any plugin you can set up to be multiband now, which is really amazing. In this particular scenario, and I'll solo this track here, what I've done is I've split the signal of the bass amp or the, the distortion, should I say, into low end and high end. And that way I can distort it separately. And I'm using the guitar amp plugin here to have separate distortion for the high end and the low end. Okay, and we'll listen to the low end only. So now if I use that much overdrive with all that low end in there, it would just sound all mushy and gross. But when you can split it off and you've got your frequency control there, let's use that real quick. It's splitting the signal and crossing over at this frequency. So it's sending everything below 250 hertz to this amp and everything above 250 hertz to this amp. And you can do whatever you want. You can add more distortion. You can add a different amp simulator. You can do whatever you want and you can stack more plugins after this. So you can add more uh, dynamics, compressors, EQs, whatever you want. And then that all ends up right here. 
a single multi-band split. Really gives you a lot of functionality, a lot of options to fine tune whatever chain you want to build or a preset that might be close to what you want, but you want to just have more control over it. Uh, this really lets you do really whatever you want. So the other things within this preset that I have is just some pretty basic EQ, got an API 560, got another parallel split for my parallel compression, and then I've got a limiter to top everything off. So I'll give you a quick before and after here with Studio Rack off. And again, the beautiful thing about this plugin is it can be as simple or as in-depth as you want it to be. And by utilizing the macros, you can just find the parameters that you use the most and just map them over here. You don't have to open the whole thing every time. You can just open this quickly, make a couple little adjustments and completely transform your sound. One of the most important things when you are mixing a track or you're in the middle of production is trying to stay in a creative mode and not letting just the technical part of what we do get in the way. With a plugin like Studio Rack, if you spend some time building your chains ahead of time, once that's done and you save those presets, when you get in a creative mode, you know what's going on because the macros are labeled, you've got them assigned already, which really keeps you in the creative mode, which ultimately, that's the goal, figuring out how to get the control you want and the sound you want but without it taking a lot of the brain power away from the creative aspect.